Inside this box is probably the biggest surprise I have ever had whilst testing motors. I don't know who ZT Innovate are. I have never heard of this motor maker before, but what they have done here is definitely worth talking about. My name's Chris Rosser and welcome back to the lab. Hi there everyone. As you may know, I have this open door policy for motor testing. Any manufacturer can send me a motor, I'll test it, and if the results are really good or there's something really interesting to discuss about the motor, I'll make a video on it. So when a company that I had never heard of called ZT Innovate reached out to me and asked if I wanted to test their motors, I didn't expect to be making this video. But the results from these motors were really good. And there is something really interesting about these motors that's worth discussing whether or not you're ever planning to buy them. So in this video, we're gonna go through these motors on the bench. We're gonna look at some of the differences between these motors and some other similar motors that are already out there. We're gonna be looking at the test results, of course, and we're gonna be talking about what we can learn from these motors that's gonna affect how we look at motors in FPV going forward. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. All right, so let's take a look at these motors from ZT Innovate on the bench, and we'll start with their standard 2207. This is a 2040 kV motor, so it's a really high kV for 6S, more suitable for 5S, and you could probably even run this motor on 4S just fine. It's got this red and black color scheme and a two-piece bell. So we have the top aluminum part of the bell that's been machined out, and then the steel flux ring is bonded below it. And that's a very kind of traditional way to make a motor. They also sent over their VTI motor, which is as far as I can tell, identical in every way to their standard 2207. It's got the same KV, it's got the same magnets, but this has a unibel design. And so this is where we can kind of learn the first thing from these two motors, which is what is the impact of moving from a two-piece bell to a unibel design? How much heavier is the unibel than the two-piece bell? So we'll start by measuring the two-piece bell and that comes in at 32.4 grams. And then what about the Unibel design? 33.4 grams. So it's interesting to note that for a 2207 motor, if you move from a two-piece bell to a Unibel design, you keep everything else exactly the same. You add just about one gram of weight. And overall, I think that's probably worth it. The durability benefit of having a Unibel where the top aluminium part extends all the way down over the flux ring, I think is definitely worth a one gram weight penalty. I have seen motors that have separated where the flux ring has separated from the top part of the bell and that can happen in a hard crash. And once that happens, the motor is completely toast. And I have never seen anything like that happen with a Unibel design because you've just got so much more area for the adhesive to act over that there's really no way that you're ever going to be able to separate the flux ring from the bell. But it is something just to be aware of that we do pay a small weight penalty for that extra durability. One thing I noticed about the ZT Innovate motors when it comes to durability is that the ZT Innovate motors don't have an O-ring that sits between the bell and the top bearing to cushion it in a crash. The RCM power motors and most other premium motors have this cushioning o-ring here and anecdotally at least that does provide protection for the bearing in a crash and help keep the bearing smoother for longer. Hopefully in a future version of these motors they can add that just to provide that extra protection in a crash. All right so we've taken a little look at those ZT Innovate motors on the bench and we are going to be going back to the bench a little bit later to reveal the secret to the performance of these motors but before that I wanna show you some test results. And to do that, I've put together a shootout. We're gonna be comparing these ZT Innovate motors against some of the best performing motors that I've ever tested. We've got the Heads Up FPV 2207 motor from 533. We've got the RCM Power GTS V4 2207 and the RCM Power Wasp Major. So let's take a look at how all of these motors compare to each other. Let's start by looking at the thrust curve and immediately the ZT Innovate motors are off to a great start. They produce more thrust than the Wasp Major, the GTS V4, and the 533 Heads Up 2207. They also perform really similarly to each other, which is as we would expect, given that these are essentially identical motors, just one with a unibel and one with a two-piece bell. So the fact that they produce so much thrust is a really great sign, but you can achieve a lot of thrust by moving to a very high KV. 
The challenge with moving to a high KV is that it usually really negatively impacts efficiency. So let's look at efficiency next. When we look at the efficiency curves for these motors and the efficiency values at 350 watts, we see that the ZT Innovate motors compare really favorably with the motors from RCM Power and 533. They don't seem to be suffering an efficiency penalty for the extra power that they're able to deliver. Because we should be expecting to see a reduction in efficiency with an increase in KV, clearly these motors are able to find some way to reduce the mechanical or electrical losses to compensate for this. The next chart I want to show you is the torque versus RPM curve, which is taken using a flywheel dyno test. So we're looking at the maximum mechanical torque that the motor can produce as it accelerates a heavy flywheel. And we're looking for two things in this test. The first is the peak mechanical torque that the motor can generate at any RPM. And we can see here that the ZT Innovate motors, the RCM Power GTS V4 and the 533 Heads Up 2207 all produce nearly identical peak torque. And that's as we would expect because they're the same size motor, they use the same size magnets, um, they have a very similar rotor designs, so they have very similar field strength, and peak torque doesn't depend on KV. So we should expect them all to perform similarly. It's really interesting to see that the WASP Major produces substantially more peak torque than all of these other designs, and that's due to the fact that it's a different size and it has different size magnets primarily. When we're looking at how the torque rolls off with RPM, we can see that the ZT Innovate motors produce a lot more torque at high RPMs than any of the others. And this is to be expected with a high KV motor. There seems to be a misconception out there that low KV motors are torquey and high KV motors have more power. And that's not true. And this graph proves that unequivocally. The ZT Innovate motor is a higher KV motor. It has the same peak torque and more torque at high RPMs. And in general, a high KV motor will always produce more torque at any reasonable RPM than a low KV motor. And that's why they're more powerful. So now that we've seen the quite impressive performance of these motors, let's head back over to the bench and let me tell you the secret to their success. And we'll also talk about whether these motors might be right for you and reasons why you may or may not want to buy them. So I think I've kept you in suspense long enough. Here's the secret. This is the ZT Innovate motor on the left and the 533 motor on the right. Notice the coils are totally different colors. You would think maybe this is just the, the wire insulation, right? The, that stops the coil shorting out. But it's not because these two motors use the same wire insulation. The reason they're a different color is that the ZT Innovate motors are using silver plated copper wire. And the heads up motor is just copper wire. So why is it a good idea to silver plate copper motor wire? Well, it all comes down to conductivity. Silver is a better conductor of heat and electricity than copper. Both silver and copper are great conductors because they have a single electron in the outer shell. And when they are a metal, they lose that outer electron and that outer electron can move freely through the metal to carry heat and electricity. It turns out that silver, because it's a bigger atom, has more internal electron shells, holds on to its outermost electron really poorly, worse than copper, which means that it dissociates that electron more easily and that its electrons can move more freely through the metal to carry heat and electricity even better. So when you plate silver onto the outside of a copper wire, you improve its electrical and thermal conductivity, and both of those properties are beneficial for motors. So why don't we use solid silver wire for our motors? Well, we could do. And if you wanna see me rewind one of these motors with solid silver wire to see how it performs, I'm up for it. Just leave a comment down below. The main reason why copper is preferred over silver is just cost. The motor would be a lot more expensive if we used solid silver wire than copper wire, but silver plating provides a middle ground where you can get some benefit in performance without adding too much cost. So that brings us to the end of the video. And as always the question, should you buy these motors and who are these motors right for? Well, these motors are currently available for $20 each from ZT Innovate and that's the only place you can buy them. And I think the reason for that is that the only way they are able to hit that price of $20 is because they're not giving away any retailer margin. If you were buying these motors from a retailer, they'd be closer to $30. 
So because you're buying direct from the manufacturer, you're basically getting wholesale pricing on these motors. In terms of performance and quality, these motors that I have are made to a high quality and their performance is exceptionally good. With any new company, any new brand, we don't have any track record to know that the quality is going to stay high, you know, going into the future. Sometimes after the first one or two or three or however many batches, the quality can sometimes change. And sometimes it gets better, but sometimes it gets worse. So we have to be aware of that. In terms of durability, the durability of the motors seems really good. Um, I will fly these motors for a bit and see if I have any issues, but I'm not the best test of durability because I'm not particularly hard on motors in general. I don't crash very hard, but the durability looks to be okay. I would say that if you really like these motors, are willing to take a risk on a new brand, and you're happy to buy direct from a Chinese manufacturer with all of the complications around shipping and import that can sometimes occur there, then you could snag some really great performing motors at a very reasonable price. However, I would say that for the majority of pilots who want to have parts that are available, spares that are available, uh, don't want to wait too long for shipping, Probably the best thing to do is to keep your eye out and let's hope that these ZT Innovate motors make their way to retailers really soon. And then we can start to see you know, how they're gonna stack up against other motors that are stocked at retailers all across the world. And they've certainly got the performance and who knows, they might have the price as well. Before we carry on, I wanna to talk to you about battery testing. I don't think there's enough independent battery testing going on in FPV right now. Manufacturers are inflating their C ratings like crazy. We've got people being massively overcharged for mediocre quality packs, and there's nowhere we can turn to for good information on which batteries have great performance and great value for money. But I wanna change all that because I wanna start independently testing all of the batteries that are being sold in FPV. But to do that, I need your help. Battery test equipment that can accurately simulate an FPV flight isn't cheap. But if everyone who watches this can chip in less than $5, we'll be off to the races. And I promise you, the information that we're gonna find is gonna save you more than $5 the next time you have to buy some packs for your FPV quad. So please head on over to my Patreon, links down in the video description, and sign up for a few dollars a month, or more if you can afford it and you think I've earned it, and I cannot wait to bring you some seriously scientific battery test results. That's all I have for you for today. So thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. And until next time, I wish you all very happy flying.